Today I am joined by an author that seems to come and go, but is responsible for more resources being put out than, well, a lot of other people. I mean, sure, you've had people like Kong, but his rips aren't all that great. But in this case, we have someone whose rips were far than great. They're superior, except for one game that I'm not going to bring up right now. The bottom line is I have <laughs> Mr. Insanius, AOK Maniac 3, David Sirloin, many names, many faces. But today we're finally going to reveal his voice to the internet and let you know who he was already. How you doing, sir? <clears throat> I'm doing pretty good. It's wrapping up MAGFest, so it's amazing. Y'all better come to MAGFest, all right? Yeah. I got paid for that, by the way. That's right. This entire thing is sponsored by MAGFest. Go to MAGFest.org and find all the best things and put in <laughs> Kamikaze 2016 and get 50% off your next purchase. Now, I think the biggest question that we all want to know is where did it all begin? Like, how did you find Mugen and what even got you into the thing? All right. So picture a time when basically no one has internet. All right. And suddenly my dad's like, we got to get this internet thing. And he shells out 500 bucks a month for a private T1 line to our residents. All right. What are you going to do with that much power? All right. My brother and I scoured the internet for as many free games as we could possibly get our hands on. All right. Game Hippo was amazing. I don't know if that site still exists, but Mujin was definitely on there. And that's where it all began. Two brothers dicking around, trying to find as many characters for Mujin as absolutely possible. Right. And of that, you decided that at some point in the future, you wanted to tackle a very, very well-known early PC game known as One Must Fall 2097. Honestly, one of my favorite games growing up. Very good choice. And your first character you went through was obviously the first character in the game, Jaguar. What made you start with that guy? Because it was easy. That's about the <laughs> shortest answer that I've ever had. Okay. I, can't, I can't argue with that hold logic. On, hold on. We got to put some stuff into context here, all right? The reason I set out to create these characters, besides the fact that they didn't exist, was that it was a natural extension of a project that I was already working on, which was to actually rip the sprites. I dug up some super old, like, tribal knowledge documentation on uh, what the files looked like. So even from the get-go, I had already been hacking into the games to get at the resources, Yeah. Like the One Must Fall project that I started, the first thing I did was create a tool that automatically generated SFF files from One Must Fall. So right off the bat, I already had 11 complete sprite files ready for Mugen. So I just did them in numerical order. And that's what I mean when I said Jaguar was first. That's number zero. So you built a tool that compiled the SSF from the game directly. That's crazy. You should do that with more things. I mean, save me a lot of trouble. I mean, save a lot of people a lot of trouble. And I think that would be a 10 out of 10 idea. But the particular gameplay you went with, was that something you just thought up or was it just something you threw together? All right, so I had been playing One Must Fall basically since it came out. And my childish mind didn't seem to register some things correctly. So the memories I had of playing the game turned out to not match the reality of the game I played. And I'm very glad that people pointed this out to me at a very early stage. You know, they didn't pull any punches. I don't know if it's appropriate to give any names here, but truth be told, they are more infamous than famous, even though I have a great deal of respect for them. Well, you know, there is a review of that character that I'm not going to really talk about. I might link to it. It's pretty honest, and I wish that more characters got reviews like that, because maybe then that would make more people honest or leave. I don't know. Some people can't take the heat. Either way, what did you like the most about this character, other than the fact that it was in numerical order? So the thing about Jaguar is that kind of what he did in the original game as well as in Mujin is that he just has a little bit of everything so you know how every game seems to have a Ryu Jaguar is that Ryu he's got the Shoryu although it kind of goes horizontal instead of up he's got fireballs so you can chuck plasma if you really want to but like the most interesting thing about Jaguar that a lot of people aren't aware of either because they haven't played the game or because you know they just get wrecked by it all the time is the fact that he has an air throw and when i say that i mean 
air to ground. Like you are in the air and you can throw people who are on the ground and it's amazing. You know, there are very few characters in existence in any number of games that have that kind of mechanic. And the best part is that Almost Fall has two of these characters because Gargoyle also has a dive throw. <laughs> yeah, I learned all about Jaguar's throw many a year ago when I finally did it by accident. And then I realized what I was doing and my brother wouldn't play with me anymore because he said I was cheating. So it was a pretty solid year for me. You said that you wrote something that basically compiled the sprite file and everything else for you. So I assume that could have been some sort of difficult. But what would you consider the most difficult thing you've dealt with during that process? It would have to be the work that went into getting people's feedback and including it in my future works. Because at that point, I had just been winging it without any consideration as to how the different characters actually interact with each other, you know? I just kind of assume, you know what, I'm going to put a red box here, I'm going to put a blue box here, fuck it. But then, you know, people tend to have some kind of tunnel vision when they're developing characters, and I'm definitely no exception, where, you know, everything you touch is gold, and other people, especially people who only play the games, have a unique insight into how things should be, and a lot of it is feel-based. People these days especially get a lot into you know oh this is how the hitboxes look oh this is why this this works and that doesn't but you know even before that you still had people who got really really good just by feeling out the game and you know only maybe uh five percent i mean that's probably really generous of people who actually play a fighting game ever get to the level where everything they feel is correct in terms of how moves work this is really hard to explain without like pictures or whatever, but you know, there are people like Daigo or Justin Wan, they're like, oh man, how do they get so good so fast at the new Street Fighters? It's like, well, because they have a feel for the game. You know, even if it changes slightly, you know, they, they'll find the new feel and then get right back to it. That makes a lot of sense. Definitely agree that I had a severe case of tunnel vision for the first five years of me doing anything. I had very nice people and very not so nice people explain how things are and what was wrong with my stuff and I eventually fixed it and now I've become one of those same people who points out things that are wrong in a very not nice manner. I have no regrets on that. Anywho, so let's say that here we are and we just opened up your character. You've never seen it before and you're gonna go play with it. You know, Almost Falls, one of your favorite games. What would you tell your past self about what you're experiencing with this character? Play the game? Like, come on, open it up and just play the game. What are you doing? Look, there's this dude named Robert on YouTube, and he's made all these combo videos. Go look at them. Go go try to do them. All right? Go learn how to play fighting games. And uh, On that note, I, I would like to point out that it wasn't until much, much later that I felt that I learned how to play games in general. I'll have to thank uh, Tempest for that, actually. She taught me how to play Clark in King of Fighters. Because I was like the first character and like the first fight, real fighting game that I was like interested in. Not saying that One Must Fall is not a real fighting game, but like at that point, no one played it, so I couldn't really play it with anyone else. That makes a lot of sense. I actually didn't know that Tempest did that. Like I don't really follow her in a lot of number of ways. Like I just know her kind of. However, that's a good set of advice. You know, people make a lot of characters that when people like us will just go and try to play it but like, oh i remember this character from this game let's see what they got and everything is horribly wrong or everything is like uncanny valley where it's almost there but it's just wrong enough to piss you off and in fact another person would be able to point that out about some characters from dengeki that he experienced that same kind of feeling with but that's neither here nor there <laughs> the bottom line is that's a feeling that most of us are like really trying not to have because it kind of sucks you see something that shows so much promise and then it's wrong or like oh no one's ever done that i hope it's great and it's not it is what it is no hold on let me get in here all right i have a feeling that people are going to take this the wrong way all right you are allowed to make mistakes all right that's that's really important i don't feel that just endlessly bashing the new kid because he's retarded because he didn't learn how to play fighting games before and still try to make a moving character. I've seen that since f forever ago, since I started immediately. But the thing about that kind of behavior is, you know, you are underestimating 
people's ability to learn. Now, you know, if they hang around for years and years and still haven't learned their shit, you know, by all means, ostracize them. But as far as I'm concerned, it's better to give people the benefit of the doubt. You know, maybe come from a place of understanding and say, hey, here is why such and such character needs this combo that you can't do with your character as it is because you screwed it up. That's and, understandable. Yeah. Because I was going to get into that in a second. Because like you said it was like that even before. So that would imply that the community back then is not that entirely different from now. And Nothing I, changes. I, I, I hear that a lot. But as far as the community was, like where... What, like, what form did you start out with? Where were you when you first got started? Don't I start out where everyone else does? We're leechers. Just I, go and find it, download it, search it up. <laughs> <laughs> I've been on Guild since the get-go. Being the largest English-speaking community, it kind of just popped up on first on the uh, Google search. So there you go. Power of Google algorithms. And you're saying that the Guild, even though it's roughly over 10 years old now, because you've been there for about that long, has not changed that much over the years whatsoever. Well, okay, I guess it's kind of different. I guess the the overall demeanor of people hasn't changed, but the issues definitely have. And I would like to think that I was a great contributor to that change. If anything, the things that people complain about the most now are not nearly as bad as what people used to get into Flame Wars. Oh yeah, I know. Sprite Wars and who's ripping off who. A lot of those shenanigans. That was a big problem. Yeah, the, the concept of ownership has definitely changed for the better, I believe. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that the the effort level for acquiring sprite rips has gone down drastically. And a lot of it is simply because I put it out there and I say, look, just do it. I don't care. I really don't care. Just use them. These are the best ones. You know, there's this other guy who would actually care a lot and would want you to contact him before he uses sprites, but his sprites are worse anyway, so just use mine. That's a good point. So, at any point in your X over 10 years experience, did you ever have to ask for help on anything? And if so, what was it? I ask for help all the time. You know, every nothing I do is an individual effort because sooner or later, I, I run into mental blocks where, you know, even even talking out my problem to other people in itself brings me to the solution even if i don't get any replies but like i need that i need that feedback sometime and sometimes there is some heavy lifting that needs to be done by multiple people i know i've conscripted you actually and when i needed help with ripping the sprites for undernight and you actually made one of the big discoveries that allowed me to complete those rips when you found plain english in the file I don't know if you remembered that, but that was literally the eureka moment for that. Well, you know, I've always been pretty good at pointing out English. <laughs> it's one of my best traits, so I was glad I can help. Like, you kind of went a little bit on some things that you feel like a lot of new people need to hear. But beyond that, like, what else do you feel like a beginner should hear if they wanted to get in the movement and started making things like today? A lot of people will complain about this stance, but you really have to have a thick skin. Anything that has to do with content creation and putting yourself out there, putting your name on something, you're going to have to take the heat from someone somewhere. You know, everyone has their nemesis. You know, no matter how well liked you end up being, you're always going to have haters. And you just have to be able to deal with it because if you can't, you know, people will make shit up about you for no reason other than their own amusement. And... You know, that's not a uniquely Mujin problem. That's just the nature of the internet. And I wish people who are on the side of trying to prevent stuff like this would understand at least that much, you know, the inevitability of it all. You know, you could, you could actually probably be a new member and spit out a 100% accurate conversion of that new game that just came out for Mujin, and you will still get shipped. That's true. Like, <laughs> I have to say, even when you do things 100% right, you're going to have someone who complains about the fact that you did everything right. No, they'll like, complain about the fact that you didn't do something else. Yeah, they're like, why didn't you add <laughs> on to it? Like, that's probably been one of the biggest complaints that I've had every time I do accurate portrayals of Super Nintendo games. Like, the one time I did branch out, it didn't work out that well for me. So I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to do it by the book from now on. 
and then people still got mad about it. They were like, you know what? It plays like it should. The people who like it are the ones that are, honestly, who I won't care about using it. So I'm good. Like, I feel like I did a good job on that. But you have any last words that you want to say? Any call out, shout outs, what have you? Burn up. Brilliant. <laughs> so we got that one out of the way. Unfortunately, I was not able to get the interview with XCV because I botched and I should have took care of it sooner than later. But that does not mean it's over for him. I'm going to catch him at another time at some point. But for now, my voice is basically gone. MacFest was too hyped, too lit. And for me, my friends, and everyone else out there, pipe it up.